check out the Caldos AMA thread at uh, slash r starcraft or use Twitter. Both it's fine. So let's go, uh, start with the third one. All right, guys. Welcome back to the third part. And now we are focusing a little bit on uh, Reddit once again before we start with questions on uh, Twitter. So let's see. Um, uh, when did you start balding? It was one of the first questions that we had today, but I don't really get bald. I d wouldn't wear a toupee. I don't want to do some kind of hair transplant. I would not operate anything um, on my body. That's something that I don't want to do. It's the same reason why I would never in my whole life take steroids or do anything like this or do drugs because I just uh, hate it. I, uh, I am as I am and that's how I'm going to stay period. And everything that I do is something that I want to achieve on my own and not because of uh, anything else or under any enhancements. So with the uh, growing bald thing, I had a bald spot in the back, a receding hairline. It still looked good with hair, but I didn't personally, I didn't really like it. I uh, thought about shaving my head for quite a while, even when I um, even when I didn't have the bald spot in the back. I didn't really have a bald spot, but it was like, um, was like a how do you say that not a, not a, not a lot of hair if you know receding um i th even before that i already thought about shaving my head and i had my ha uh, hair cut very short anyways so at th some point i just tried it it looked good and then i was like yeah well that's actually pretty convenient uh, does eating kimchi every day help you with your gameplay that's actually a funny question because i talked about with the uh, sound and uh, hack about uh, <laughs> why Koreans are so good and then uh, someone just uh, immediately jumped and was like kimchi do you like League of Legends and do you think it's more popular than Starcraft I personally have never played League of Legends I've watched it several times it's basically like Dota like Dota 2 it's similar at least MOBA or how they call the uh, genre nowadays and I uh, think that it's more rewarding in many ways which is why it's so popular because it's so easy to be like good or have success whereas in uh, to, due to the ladder system and how starcraft works i think it can be a lot more frustrating of course it's free which plays a huge role and the riot guys do an awesome uh, job at publishing it personally i don't think that this is a great esports title i thought about casting it as well as well as i thought about dota but i don't think that i have the same passion for the game i might at some point do it in the future i don't know you never know but right now i personally enjoy starcraft 2 more let's just leave it like this i like playing games like this but i don't what I, why i don't play them right now is because it's a huge time investment the games last for like an hour and i don't feel like investing this much time into a game it's fun to play it but i personally don't enjoy watching it at this point and just my personal opinion. I'm not saying that it's crap or anything like it. I know that it has a huge follow followership, a huge audience, and I can understand why. But at the same time, I have to say that for me, StarCraft 2 is a game where, in my personal opinion, you need a lot more skill. Of course, there are different kinds of skill sets, as in uh, LOL and Dota. You need to work together with uh, your teammates quite a lot. But I personally think that uh, in regards to the skill that you need, uh, StarCraft 2 needs a lot more. And for me, it's more exciting. But I get why LOL, Dota, and uh, all these other games have a huge followership. And uh, it's it's a team play. So for me, it's kind of obvious why they have such a huge crowd following it, especially because the game's free. Let's face it, you can play it everywhere, at every PC bank in Korea. And that's a huge difference if compared to a game there you have to pay for an account. To do you to do, 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 talked about this? Um, <laughs> Once again, the question: If it was hard to leave the country, but one of the things that is uh, quite interesting, he added another question to it or another aspect: Did you had any racial issues? I think that it's basically related to uh, people being racist in Korea or anywhere else. Not really. We met one guy in the subway who was kind of a racist, apparently. He started insulting us when we talked English for no reason and was being a douchebag. But I think you have idiots in any country. Everywhere you go, there are idiots. There are just people that are stupid, um, not well educated because of that, kind of angry on the world or whatever. I don't know. I don't know the reasons. But besides those guys or this one guy that we had, 
uh, he was quite old, so maybe he had a problem. So he thought, he, I think he thought that we were Americans, and a lot of the Koreans, as I was told, especially the older ones, blame America for a few things that happened in the past. And I was told that the American soldiers behaved quite bad for quite a while. So I can't confirm all of this, but that's what I, the feedback that I got, and that might be might have been one of the reasons why he was uh, insulting us and uh, basically telling us to get the fuck out. But it, there are idiots everywhere. And besides of this one guy, everyone in Korea was very nice to us so far. Uh, <laughs> how do you maintain such a ridiculously high level of charisma? You're one of my favorite caster. I have no idea. I thank you very much for your opinion, but uh, that's not something that you do. I just try to be who I am, I guess. Pocado seems to be really old school. I didn't read the question yet, but I saw the last word. And... Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, this story again. I'm a bit old school and have been following you for quite a while. Can you describe the feeling of the scene back in Warcraft 3 when you uh, when there was just audio cast? What is for you the major difference between audio and video casts? Uh, I feel that audio casts had more personal touch and flair. Often the atmosphere was better. Music played a major part that you would get more hype for games. Your favorite current song of the Alcapella contest? Okay, okay. Um, the major difference is that with a video stream, uh, people see what's happening. With an audio stream, you always had to tell them. You had to tell them what was happening. And it was easier to make the game exciting. Uh, one of the major compliments that I got back then was when uh, you could not watch the game. But a few people were be a were able to be in the observe uh, to observe the match, and I personally, um, for me, I thought always that my job was not only to tell people about the game, but also to make it exciting. It's sometimes the game is over after a while, and you know it. And especially in uh, StarCraft II, uh, there might be something happening, like an early push. For example, if a Protoss plays against a uh, Terran player and he has the opportunity to do some the three gateway pressure in the beginning or go for a huge attack and he does a massive amount of damage, kills a lot of SCVs, but he has to retreat because for some reason uh, the attack was fended off. But because so much damage was done, it's already very apparent that the uh, Protoss player will win he will take the game. The Terran can't come back into this. He lost too much. But even though this is true, I think the job as a caster is not only stating that it's very hard for him to come back, but um, depending on the situation, on how huge this advantage is, you always should try to make it a little bit more exciting in order to entertain your audience. And back in Warcraft 3, I thought that this... Uh, in my personal opinion, this was also my job to do. So I was casting a game, and one of the uh, people that were able to get a uh, job, uh, sorry, um, a slot in the observer um, lobby, watched it, and uh, he said in the stream, he was like, "This is really unbelievable. I w listened to your cast so many times, and I actually have to say that I really enjoy your cast of the game quite a lot. But if I would not see the game, I would really think this is one of the closest games ever. But at this point, I really think that this player has an advantage. Or, yeah, th for me, that was just." It might sound really... That, that, that is probably sounding really weird. I don't think that I get my point across very well, but in the end, I really took this as a, as a compliment. And if you talk about the differences between video streaming and broadcasting uh, on an audio level, this is definitely uh, the major difference that you have the... Um, that you have the, uh, the the video feed as well. And this is something that people also need to realize. People always talk. And... Uh, tell me how to improve my casting. But they never they, they kind of refer on solo casting and compare it to the GSL casting where you have a, a, a partner. So you can't compare solo casting and dual casting. That's not how it works. And at the same time, they talk about observing. And everyone talks about how amazing Legend is with his uh, uh, observing. And he is, don't get me wrong. But try to keep in mind then that when you watch a caster observing a game, like we have at a lot of foreign tournaments, the caster is moving the screen. And people bitch about it when he misses something. Um, or if a solo caster misses something. First of all, it's easier to miss a drop when you're a solo caster than it is when you have a partner. Because your partner might realize, okay, there's a drop going on. You're just currently talking and you're showing what you're talking about because you want to show people your um, your thought process, what you, what you have in mind. But the second person will be able to, hey, listen up, there's a drop going on. Sorry for interrupting you, but have a look over here. And at the same time, if you have a dedicated observer, like Legend, he can focus on only, on only clicking. 
He doesn't have to say anything and you would not believe how hard it sometimes is to really talk the entire time to tell people what's happening, to try to analyze the game and at the same time keep a close look on the minimap. This is sometimes really, really hard. So also something to keep in mind and one of the aspects that has changed. In audio cast, you don't need to do this. You tell people what's happening. But in a video scheme, you have to also think about what's um, what they do. One thing that, for example, also a caster like Apollo, who is a great caster, is doing wrong, in my opinion, if I talk to a caster like Mori, one of the first lessons that I gave Mori, who is a German caster and uh, uh, that I think has really great potential, was when he was showing like army tabs. For example, he would he would show you the army and the worker supply in comparison between the two players. And he does one of the mistakes that a lot of other casters, and I include Apollo here, I'm sure that he doesn't do it always. I just mentioned his name because I saw him cast uh, recently and I realized it, uh, is um, the caster often makes the mistake of flashing. He flashes the information. He knows exactly, because he's pressing the hotkeys, he knows exactly what's coming up next and he knows where to look. So when the information pops up on the screen, he's already looking at it and he knows exactly what he's looking for. So he, he, he st presses the hotkey, he looks at what he wants to know and then he immediately presses the hotkey again and the information vanishes. But for the viewer, for, for you guys out there, that's actually too fast because you are watching the stream, you are watching what's happening, you're listening to this cast and suddenly there's this information popping up on the screen you're like, oh my god, look, there, there's something. And before you can actually read the numbers, it's gone and you have no idea what's happening. So that's one of the first lessons that I always tell someone if he actually um, does this mistake. Yeah, um, I'm like, okay, listen, if you, if you show them something, if you show something to your viewers, wait for two seconds before you press the hotkey again uh, before it uh, before you take it away because they first of all they need to realize what exactly do you show them they need to realize okay this is army supply against worker supply this is um, APM right now this is maybe resources lost and then they have to be able to read the numbers so that's very important in my opinion and also if you uh, um, if I cast with Todd Todd is a great caster he has a lot of insights I love casting with him but I always, I always get a bad feeling when he's starting to control the mouse because he's too fast. He's scrolling with the mouse because he touches the screen with his mouse and you should always do drag scrolling because it's much smoother and it's better for the audience. So that's a lot of things that you have to keep in mind when you are casting um, with a video stream in a comparison to casting a Warcraft 3 but you all only had to talk because pe you could do everything on the game. You could just jump between scenes because people wouldn't see it and it was just you getting information and then talking about the information to get it out to your viewers. Uh, can you tell your new followers the story of the banana phone back in the day when you started to learn how to stream? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I'm quite happy that we don't have this story around anymore. <laughs> maybe another time. I will do a blog about it, maybe. If I, I'll think about it. Uh, there are some questions, guys, that I'm not really willing to answer because it will just create bad blood and uh, there's no reason for me to do it. So, what foreigner do you think is the worst one in Korea? Are there foreigners that you don't like that live in Korea? Why would I answer this? Of course there are foreigners in Korea that I don't like. Of course there are people that I think are not that good that are here right now. Which is, by the, which is basically, by, by the way, not really the point. If they are willing to come to Korea in order to practice, then that's, that's fine. That's what they want to do. So why would I judge that? But uh, if I was asked about it, I obviously have an opinion on it. But why would I say that? That doesn't make any sense. It would just create bad blood and it's, it's pointless. Uh, I'm not particularly interested in this thread, just having, uh, because can people don't want this comment saying done, okay, that's about it. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is, uh, what was it, your most awkward moment with Naniwa? That was actually really funny. Um, back then, when, I, when he was staying at the gum house for a few days and I was playing, I just came to Korea. And uh, they would make fun of me when I was playing, like uh, I was playing on uh, master level. So obviously they are a lot better than I am. And they would just commentate on uh, me playing. And it was just really funny because Todd would be like, yeah, only build drones. No, 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 no. Don't build roaches. Build drones, build drones, build drones. Get a hundred and then start building units. So they would just bitch. And at some point, Naniwa just took it a little bit too far. 
and I kind of told him while I was streaming, hey guys, it's okay now. You kind of crossed the line now. I, I know that I am not as good as you. You are pro players. You are dedicating your entire life to pro gaming right now. I'm a caster and I try to be as good as possible, but at this point, um, just don't overdo it. And he didn't get it. He didn't get that I was actually serious about it. And I was getting really mad. I was getting really mad. I was trying to concentrate on my game. And it was a game that uh, went not the way that I wanted. And uh, uh, I just told him over and over again, Nani, I'm serious right now. I'm not kidding anymore. We had a lot of fun uh, talking about this. And you guys had a blast. But at this point, stop it. And he wouldn't stop. He really would not stop because he did not get it. He just made more fun about uh, how I play and about me. And uh, uh, it was teasing first, but at this point I was so mad. So I paused, uh, I didn't pause the game, but when the game was finished, I just stood up and I walked up to him and I was, I was raging. I was really, I was so angry. You have no idea. I was standing in front of me and I told him, Naniwa, seriously, if you don't shut the fuck up now, I am going to kill you. I w <laughs> and that was basically the moment when he realized, oh, he wasn't kidding. He was actually serious. So he really ap he apologized later. And uh, he treated me. We went to have food and he treated me to, uh, and I think we were at TGI Fridays so because Todd wanted to go. He wanted to have ribs. And uh, it was all good. But at this point, I was really, just, just the moment, where the, the, the look on his face when he realized that he really took it too far. That was just really funny. But, well, that's just how it happened. That was a really funny uh, funny moment, at least. It might not be the most interesting story, but it was a really funny moment. On the other hand, by the way, um, before people uh, now think like I'm talking about players, like they go too far, I did the, basically a similar thing with Todd at some point where I thought something was funny and Todd told me, hey, well, he was really upset about it, so I apologized as well. Everything was all good in the end. But yeah, that's obviously something that will always happen when you talk to new people, when you uh, try to get to know each other, that at some point you will have to test your limits. Okay. Ta -ta -ta. All right. I don't use Twitch um, at the moment. Uh, right now, I don't use Twitch. I might in the future. Ta -ta -ta. Do you ever feel professional gaming will become mainstream in North America? I actually, it is right now. I actually think it is right now. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So. Um, well, maybe not professional gaming as it is, but uh, as as a job, but uh, watching it and as an entertainment or as a sport, yeah. Mm, okay, let's try a refresh. We had the problem that I think they did not like the way that I'm doing the AMA right now because uh, usually, apparently, it's done that you write. But okay, they, apparently they closed it. Um, it's still open apparently. Okay. So yeah, a lot of people are talking about how the AMA should probably be done, but as I already said, I'm going to release the videos anyway. Mm. Okay, there are still a few that we can uh, that uh, a few questions that we can answer later i think at this point we should probably just jump back to twitter because i have a lot of tweets about it as well and i it's going to be a, bit, a little bit hard to uh, get through this but yeah yeah i think we do the 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 twitter comments for now okay um ahil was the last one so we have to scroll down until we start where we finished where is he uh, i think it's up here yeah there he is Oops. All right. So let's have a look at this. It's something that we can show because it's less text. Uh, how did you find your stay in Australia and how does it compare to other countries you've visited? Uh, uh, I have to say that Australia was one of the most beautiful countries that I've ever seen in my entire life. I love the diversity of the country. Uh, it was sometimes really annoying that there were so many Germans. Uh, at some point I started lying to them. I told them I was Croatian. Because I, get, I tan really fast. If I go to a, a, con, a, con, a country where we have a lot of sunshine, I tan really, really fast. So I could pull off the look and I just told all of them I was Croatian because I couldn't be bothered talking German to them all the time. 
and Australia itself is brilliant. There's so much to do and it's just an amazing country. I love doing the bungee jump and uh, actually if you guys are interested in that, I have two videos of me bungee jumping. I think they are on I think they are on my YouTube channel. I might include them. I should probably include them to my Facebook uh, page as well. They might be there already. But the bungee jumps were amazing and everything that you can do in Australia was really great. So I enjoyed Melbourne quite a lot. I loved Melbourne. Sydney is a great town as well, but I will always prefer Melbourne. We went to the Australian Open. We had tickets for the semifinals. I went to the Grand Prix in St. Kilda. I actually lived in St. Kilda. So uh, it was really amazing. Uh, do you miss Germany? Mm, sometimes. Sometimes I miss Germany, sometimes I miss certain aspects of it. And yeah, you need to host a course on how to be amazing. <laughs> I don't think so, <laughs> but thanks. Uh, yeah, Th thank you very much, but I don't think I'm all that amazing. Okay. If you, if a guy wanted to send you someone, what do you suggest you start with? Well, you start with whatever there is. So if there's a beta of Heart of the Swarm, you start with the beta of Heart of the Swarm or Wings of Liberty. Both will be fine. You need to learn the mechanics first and, of course, a few strategies, but that's not something that is going to happen in a day or a week. So definitely, yeah, definitely start with whatever there is. If you have a beta, then start with a beta. I was at GOM TV two weeks ago and I got the impression that StarCraft 2 isn't uh, actually as big uh, of a deal in Korea. Any thoughts on this? Uh, that's actually quite true. So StarCraft 2, the, the problem that you have with StarCraft 2 compared to Brood War is pretty simple. I talked to a lot of people about it because I was very curious about it myself. And what, I got, uh, what they explained to me is you have to understand how the, how it worked back then. PC bunks are still very popular in Korea, but back then they apparently were more popular. And if you went to an internet cafe, which is basically a PC bank, then you could play StarCraft for free, Brute War that is, because they used cracked versions of the game. So it was free to play. But right now, if a Korean goes to a PC bank, he, uh, he can choose between all these different games that were designed for Koreans, that are in Korean, and target specifically the Korean market or he can play and they are free or he can play uh, StarCraft 2 which he needs an account for and he has to spend money so Blizzard might have um, made it a little bit more cheaper for the Koreans but in the end it doesn't really matter because if for them it's a decision of paying money for something that they don't had to pay money for in the past um, or just play a different game that they had a lot of. They can use a lot of different games. So at this point, it didn't make a difference for them. So the Korean Brood War scene is actually a lot bigger in uh, Korea as uh, the compared to the StarCraft 2 scene. On the other hand, with StarCraft 2 getting so huge in uh, uh, the foreign countries, in uh, Europe, in America, suddenly it's very attractive for the um, Brood War players to switch over to StarCraft because th there's a lot more money involved. And uh, that's basically what uh, creates uh, the shift right now. So. That's something that you always have to keep in mind how, how it actually started. Uh, Naniwa chances for winning the GSL, I think pretty high. I don't know. At this point, with only eight players left, it's actually very hard to say. If he beats MVP, and that's a big if, so that's not going to be an easy task, uh, he will have to face a Protoss player. That's obvious. But And he feels pretty confident in PvP. Even though he practices against Terran now a lot, he uh, told me that yeah, he thinks that his matchup against uh, Protoss is actually really, really good. And it's one of his uh, most favorite ones. Um, and... Okay, so I think he has good chances, but it's not going to be easy. I mean, seriously, guys, he's facing MVP right now. This is going to be hard enough. So let's not jinx it just yet and uh, wait a little bit longer of what's going to happen. Uh, uh, did you enjoy your time? Uh, uh, time in Australia. Uh, yeah, I did. Um, well, did you like the people? I definitely did. I enjoyed it quite a lot. I actually worked in removals because I wanted to meet a lot of people and I didn't want to work in an office, which was really important for me. So uh, my co-workers, most of them were from New Zealand and we had such a great time. I went to New Zealand in order to celebrate my birthday with one of the guys who actually, his birthday is on the same day as mine. Same day, same month, same year. He's five hours older than I am. It was brilliant. And uh, we got along so well. He was like a brother. It was really amazing. Mm, so yeah, I, I loved Australia. And as mentioned before, I lived in St. Kilda for most of the time. 
Okay, the Brood War question is basically something I'm gonna answer now. Flash apparently thinks about um, uh, switching to Brood War, a lot of them do. And what do you think of Vegemite? Oh my god, it's so disgusting. Vegemite is horrible. It is horrible. How can you eat that? Ah, bah, bah, bah. Are you playing any other game? No. Talked about this already a little bit. Do you, have, do you have any favorite bodybuilders and do you follow any of the competitions like Mr. Olympia? No, I don't follow any of these competitions. I don't have a favorite bodybuilder. I am not a huge fan of bodybuilding. Um, I don't want to be like as big as possible. Uh, I'm just, I try to be athletic. I try to have a decent body and to be athletic, but that's basically it. I'm not following any contests at all. Uh, there was a, con a contest in Korea right now in Seoul just uh, last week and uh, a few of the guys at my gym are really buff. They are um, bodybuilders and they work as personal trainers at the gym as well. And they participated in the contest. So I saw a few of them in uh, the changing room uh, just posing in front of the mirror and I have to say, well done. Uh, pretty, pretty good. Nice definition. And uh, yeah, that, that, it's nice to observe sometimes if you have a, if you know the people that actually go there, but I'm not following any of the competitions. Uh, <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Lots of people are complaining that the Battle.net uh, user interface is too boring lonesome. What do you think that Blizzard should add to make it better? Oh, there's a lot of things that they can add and uh, I'm uh, hoping that they do. They could integrate streams like, uh, for example, something similar to what Team Liquid has or other websites. and. There's just a lot of stuff that they can add. The question is, will they? And I would ha love to see, like, uh, f I don't know, a proper chat channel and something along those lines. Well, we kind of have them already. But yeah, kind of, they should integrate things that are promoting uh, esports, like streams that you can watch, like an interface where you have integrated and integrated vision that you don't have to. Well, maybe something that you can watch the streams included, at least the owned and Twitch streams included in the battle. I don't know. Something along those lines. There are a lot of things and people who have been talking about it on Reddit, on Team Liquid, and I'm sure that Blizzard will make some, some changes in uh, um, Heart of the Swarm. I'm pretty sure about it. Uh, how do you feel about Scarlet's recent success? I actually think that it's brilliant. Why wouldn't I? Transgender rights wanted me to ask. I don't know what the problem with Scarlet's success is. She's doing an amazing job. She uh, did ma uh, make quite a splash at IPL. I was really happy to see that we had such a story at IPL and she just won the Iron Lady tournament. I actually watched the finals and he played, uh, she said, Bleh. okay, awesome. So I now, uh, this will be, the people will argue about this, won't they? Uh, misspoken once at the wrong moment and uh, all goes to hell. No, really, she, did an awesome job. Her creep spread is something that Reddy kind of loved. She made a few mistakes in the games, uh, but she's uh, she's the one female player that is on a very high level. We have like Aphrodite as well, obviously. Flo is on a decent level too, but with her being a grandmaster top 10 on an A and competing against Koreans and uh, winning against Bumblebee, uh, yeah, that's something that is definitely something. So I hope that she will have more success that she will attend a lot of uh, um, offline events and uh, other tournaments. Talent versus hard work, both is important. With hard work, you can achieve a lot, but in the end, you have to have talent and hard and uh, put a lot of hard work in if you want to be at the top. Do you like Street Fighter? I like watching it. I don't like playing it because I don't know the moves. Played it when I was younger, but not anymore. Yeah, the thread on uh, Reddit got deleted. I don't know, thanks. Um, but you're not answering it in text. It's not even a rule. Okay, well, it's okay. If the, we can rely on Twitter, we can rely on uh, the r starcraft r slash uh, starcraft thingy. Uh, why aren't you doing the AMA on Reddit? I do it on both, as you might have realized already. I do both of it. Um, my favorite Warcraft 3 Pro pre Starcraft 2. I was a huge fan of Grubby especially because I knew him. And that's one thing that we um, that I should talk about as well. For me, it was also important to have a relation to the player that I was cheering for. So there were a lot of good players out there, but it's always a little bit different if you know the person that is playing in person and if you, um, if you like him, if you would call him a friend. Uh, okay. 
Okay. Da, 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 da. <laughs> this awful uh, French song. I actually think that Zars with Javier is a really nice song. How's your elbows since Finland? It's a lot better. It's kind of healed. It's still sometimes when I do uh, when I do uh, curls for biceps, it's um, it hurts a bit, but not all that much. But in general, it has already uh, it, uh, has been a lot better. Um, okay. Okay, my re MMA was reinstated. Okay, thank you very very much. And we'll have uh, questions on uh, Reddit again as well. Mm. Okay, <laughs> my muscles are not that huge. Believe me, I don't even go for uh, mass. I want to be. Uh, I want to have good definition, and I want to look athletic. That's it. I am not having like huge muscles, at least not thinking about my standards. <laughs> Since South Korea is in a war zone, have any Koreans thought that you were American and started to talk to you? Oh, most Koreans actually think that I'm American. So if you talk to them, and especially because my English is, uh, I would say, decent, you have to realize one thing. If you talk English like in a stream, it's a lot harder to, well, it's uh, most of the times a lot. It's a lot harder to talk if you have an actual conversation with the person. It's much easier to talk English because you have all those breaks where you can think about what you're going to say next. So uh, a lot of Koreans that I talked in because of the uh, the fact that the English with most Koreans is not there. English is pretty bad most of the time. Some of them have a really good English, but most of them don't speak English all that well. So when I talk to Koreans, they usually assume that I'm American and then I have to just tell them that I'm actually not American, but that I'm uh, um, originally from Germany and that English is my second language. Who's Legend? Oh, sorry, I should have elaborated on this a little bit earlier. Legend is the observer for GOM TV. So he's, a Star -tale, he's from StarTale, StarTale Legend, and he's do, he does the, um, the camera for, for GOM TV. He does the observing in-game. My bad. Uh, if there were a third-party program that allowed you to observe more effectively, efficiently, like zooming out, would you use it? If it was good, I might consider it. Has to be good. Some good features. I don't know what you could ex exactly do, but I think if it was a decent program, I would definitely use it. That's what I. Um, you kind of look at a program, and if it gives you a benefit in your cast, then you usually do it. Is your mom watching? I seriously doubt that. I seriously doubt that my mom is watching. She is not really all that good with the internet and uh, uh, talking about my family, my mom, and myself. Well, we don't get along all that well. What's the biggest cultural shock in Korea and what was the best experience so far? Hmm. I have no idea. Honest truth? No clue. Best experience in Korea so far? Probably the GSL finals were pretty amazing. It was really great. And also uh, a lot of the cast that we had were really uh, memorable. Uh, the cast with Atosis too. I didn't really have a cultural shock. I've traveled quite a bit before I came to Korea, so I was prepared for cultural differences. And there are obviously always a couple of things that you might not be prepared for, but that's something if you have the attitude towards it, then usually you can adapt quite fast and well. So, yeah, that's a thing about it. All right, so I will have a look now at Reddit. I don't know, the the thread was reinstated, but we already said earlier that people should maybe use the other thread, so I will just try to go to both. This is getting a little bit out of control. We'll, uh, we do it another uh, 30 minutes, guys, because I promised someone uh, to uh, give them an interview, and I did not expect this to go this long. We are, we are already hitting the three hour mark. Um, Okay, I think there are not that many questions over here, but I think there might be some over there. There's, there's still a lot on uh, on Twitter. Okay. All right, let's start at the top. Okay, why is it that whenever Korean fans uh, in the GOM crowd are shown on TV, they cover their faces? I've uh, heard various explanations ranging from it's a cultural thing to they don't want to ca get caught skipping a school. I think both is correct. 
The GOM studio is located in a school, so in the same building there's also a school, so a lot of the students actually skip school and uh, go to uh, the, uh, well, go to watch StarCraft. And when Atosis and uh, uh, um, Tastus explained this, and I was not in Korea, but watching their streams, this didn't make any sense to me until I realized that the school is actually in the same building. So, yeah, it's a lot more likely to get caught if you are actually in the same building and there might be a teacher around somewhere and even in the audience or just watching the stream or whatever. So that's one of the reasons. But it's also a cultural thing, in my opinion. Okay... Uh, team games like Toon 2s and StarCraft 2 are, in my opinion, not really all that exciting. Uh, they are fun to play, but when you talk about casting them, I think it's also very hard to cast them because Blizzard did not include everything that they should have in order to make it possible to cast them. Even if you change, for example, the ally colors, then you will have both players of a team in the same color, but if you watch at the tabs, like the production tab and the unit counting station, it's there are still different colors for each player, so it's very, very hard to keep up with everything. So right now I don't think that casting or observing two and twos is all that exciting. Uh, how much money do you make doing this? Not at all. I didn't run a single at, uh, at so since I started this AMA, so... Uh, judging by the que by the answer that uh, was already posted by Almotork, I think this is what the question aimed for. So yeah, this AMA, I'm obviously not getting any money by it. Mm -hmm. Where does your nick come from? I'm curious because my language is the one that's closest to all the fantasy names, Lord of the Rings style name that is. Uh, I kind of invented it. I uh, needed a nickname. It was back then, it was for Diablo th the 2 character for Barbarian and I wanted to come up with a unique one that I could also use in different games and there was the Belgariad saga that I really liked and there was uh, there were a couple of characters that I basically used in order to create this one. I like the name Kronos, I wanted the nickname to start with a K. There was also uh, Korgath Blade Fist and uh, Katga, two characters out of Warcraft 2 and uh, that I kinda liked and that the spelling was sometimes a little bit similar and there was Kelda which was a character in the Belgariad saga. So I knew that I didn't want like any vowels uh, like an E or an I. So I wanted to have dark vowels and I wanted the, uh, um, for the looks of the nickname, I wanted it to start with a KH. And that's basically when I started to just toy around with uh, the letters and came up with Caldo. And I really liked it. It just felt right. And yeah, used the nickname ever since. <laughs> Alright guys, I'll stick to Twitter right now. I'm sorry for this, but uh, there is all this discussion going on in this uh, Reddit thread about uh, how an MMA should be done, uh, AMA should be done, and it's really hard to find the questions that really matter. So I'm really sorry, but I think it's easier right now to stick to the Twitter questions uh, because, uh, yeah obviously there I can read the questions and don't have to look for them. I did not know that my thread would cause such an uproar on Reddit. I should have probably included in the uh, in the opening post that I would upload the VODs as well so that people could um, uh, watch them. Yeah, my mistake and if we do it again at some point I will definitely change it but yeah, I'm sorry I didn't expect this. Uh... Are Korean women really that beautiful? Yes, they are gorgeous. Korean women are really gorgeous, obviously not all for them, but in general they are very beautiful. That What I don't like about them is they are usually really shy. Most of them are shy and uh, yeah, I kind of submissive sometimes. I really like cheeky girls, so right now I would say that I... I don't know. I, w I don't even want to say that I prefer Europeans or uh, Western girls, but yeah. If you just talk about the looks, Korean women are really gorgeous. Uh, when are you doing the, going to do the next letter session? I have no idea. I actually answered this question already quite uh, quite often in the past, and every time I said like, "Yeah, I'm going to do it next week," and then I suddenly didn't have the time to do it, and which was really annoying for me as well. So yeah, sorry guys, but I'm not going to answer this. I will definitely announce it on Twitter and Facebook. So if you want to know, just follow me on Twitter and Facebook, and you'll be able to find it. Uh, we can do this someone again. 
Okay, Mockingbird apparently tuned in for the first time and he really likes it. Thanks. He didn't listen to any cast apparently. <laughs> Should units lose HP when they get dropped due to the impact? <laughs> That's actually a really good question. I would like that. That would really be funny. Do you speak French? Un peu. <laughs> Uh, okay, that came out completely wrong. Um, I can understand French a lot better than I speak. I had it at school, and when uh, Desro and Todd talk, or when I read a conversation, a basic conversation in French, I can understand it quite well. My French is not all that good. My active vocabulary is kind of gone. So in uh, regards of speaking, I would say no. I still am stuck in my head with the stupid song that we had to learn at school. You probably all know it's like Sur le pont d'Avignon, l'on y danse, l'on y danse. Yeah. Tout en rond. But anyways, uh, a little bit. And yeah, I think we scratched already a little bit. And LOL is available in every PC bang. It's a team game. It is a, a lot more rewarding for, um, in uh, the opinion of, of most people, than StarCraft II. And at the same time, it's free, which is a huge, huge difference, especially when you go to PC bangs regularly. And yeah, the shaved head. We kind of talked about this. I was a little bit scared that it would look stupid and uh, did it when I was in Australia because I didn't want to do it in uh, in Germany. One of the reasons was also that I was afraid that some people in Germany, I mean, Germany has a history with the Nazis and uh, therefore we, uh, I was a little bit reluctant to do it because I thought, okay, if I shave my head and I'm uh, in Germany and some people will probably just give me shit for it, especially if it looks stupid that um, I'm a racist or whatever. That happens in Germany quite often. But I have to say that since I did it, nobody actually said anything like it. I was quite happy how it looked so I was like okay well let's stick to it I don't know about tasteless you will have to ask uh, him it's obviously not a question that I can answer what is your favorite Korean food that would be a, um, a bulgogi and also uh, kimbap ever got drunk on soju mm. No, not really drunk. I drank soju, but I didn't really get drunk on it. It's really hard to get drunk on soju, in my opinion. It's just watered down vodka. It doesn't taste all that good and is only half the alcohol, so yeah. Color from Kamak, which League of Legends champion has the... <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I don't even know the champions. Uh, are there any GSL qualifiers for foreigners in Korea in July, August? Do you know where to find specific dates and sign-ups? Gom Gom TV usually announces them on GOMTV.net in the forum. I don't know exactly when the next one will be. Uh, who do you think will be the best foreign player of 2012? Naniwa, Stefano, anyone else? I think it will definitely be either Naniwa or Stefano. Mm. How do you actually define best? We saw Naniwa lose against Zerg players on uh, DreamHack because he didn't prepare against Zerg, but he does very well in GSL Code S. So it's not a question that I can really answer. You have to come up with some criteria on how to judge them. Uh, is it uh, success in foreign tournaments, success in GSL, or just overall performance? It's not a question that's easily answered because of this just difference that I just talked about like foreign tournaments compared to the GSL okay I'm obviously no commentate on this how does the, the climate differ from uh, South Korea to Germany was it hard to adjust so far it wasn't hard to adjust the weather here is very very uh, cold in winter which was a bit of a problem for me but in the end it's all about the summer apparently it's very humid in summer the humidity seems to be really a problem and it's raining all the time but so far I didn't have to experience this I was just told that it's really unpleasant in the summertime mm. We talked about esports in uh, the future already, and uh, those five-year questions are, in my opinion, like really stupid. Um, in general, 
not about even if they ask you for example at an interviewer when you apply for a company and they are like yeah where you do you see yourself in five years and I'm like yeah what the fuck I have no clue I don't even know what's going to happen next year I don't even remember what we happened yesterday so why would I know what happened in five years if you actually think about it if you would tell someone uh, all this 10 year stuff if you travel back in time and you tell someone um, uh, with a who still uses one of these old school phones and you're like yeah in 10 years everybody will have a mobile phone they will just run around and there was going to be something that's called the internet they will be like eh and yeah so that's that's a question that does doesn't make sense in my opinion I would like to be I mean the question is aimed on uh, do you think that esports is going to have success and I really hope that esports is going to have success so if that answers your question yeah that would be my answer I think it will and uh, I don't know how big it will be but it will grow if anyone ever asks you what uh, StarCraft 2 is, ask about your job when they have zero knowledge, but we try to explain to them. I always compare it to, uh, well, if I if they ask me about my job, I tell them that I do basically the same as uh, commentators for football, for soccer, what they do, and uh, try to relate to this. If I have to explain the game itself, it's a little bit more difficult. Mm. Mm. Ramparted AMA, you mean like uh, what happened in the thread? Uh, I think I might, ha I should have probably anticipated it and included into the opening post that I will upload the VODs. But it's we have all these questions anyways. I, guys, we've been I've been answering questions for three hours now, and uh, well, I will answer for another fifteen minutes before we uh, stop this at least for the day. So I think that this was definitely, if you can call it a success, a success. We have one thousand four hundred viewers, so at least it seems to be interesting. Uh, for a lot of people and therefore yeah I don't know it seems to be something that you guys enjoy and I don't have a problem with the reddit thread getting a little bit out of control next time I will include the information about the VODs I think this will help a lot and for now I think it's fine as it is we have all the questions on Twitter that we can relate to we asked uh, we answered a lot of questions on reddit as well so I think it's okay uh, does doping exist in esports? Not to my knowledge, unless you uh, count coffee and uh, like uh, Red Bull or Hot Six. It's doping. My favorite alcoholic drink, any secret mixers. I love Woodstock bourbon that is sold in, uh, in Australia uh, in combination with Coke. Woodstock bourbon and Coke. I love it. I really, really love it. And I like Cuba Libre, uh, which is a rum and Coke mix as well. I really like those too. I enjoy those. No secret mixers, just a well done Cuba Libre and uh, the uh, the um, bourbon coke mix that I just talked about. Will you cast yourself in making some pancakes soon? Uh, I probably will. I probably will record a video because people have been uh, have been harassing me about it um, like crazy. So uh, it's I don't know what you guys expect. It's not going to be like a secret pancake recipe, but it's just the main ingredients. It's just love, guys. I don't know. It's just I like pancakes. What can I say? Uh, which muscle group do you think is the most sexy one for guys? What do you mean for guys? The goal that I have, which is in my opinion one of the most hardest to achieve, and because it's not only it's not only about exercising and working out, it's also about your diet, a lot about your diet, is a six pack. That's the one thing that I'm aiming for. When I have my six pack back, I will be happy again. Um, it's slowly but steadily getting there but still that's the one thing that I really want to have again it's, right now it's looking okay but still I want my six pack back <sighs> well obviously I'm happy to answer some in-depth questions about the GOM studio as long as I can why are you casting uh, KSL today, Star Tail Fighting? There are some things that I have to talk about with Owen before I'm going to cast KSL, and I don't have time because I have an appointment for an interview as well, so I have to stop in a few minutes. Uh, did you watch a movie which Atosis told you to watch? I actually didn't, I forgot about it. Yeah, we talked about it and he told me to watch, but I didn't watch it yet now. Do you enjoy reading? I enjoy reading a lot. Any favorite books? Uh, yeah, Song of Ice and Fire is my favorite series, and I think it's a shame that the series only got popular because of the TV series, which I never watched, because I don't want to ruin my personal view or my personal image that I have of all the characters. So I started uh, reading this in 2002, 2001 or 2002. 
That's the series that I enjoy the most. I love Ender's Game, which is a great book in my opinion. I love Ken Follett, John Grisham, uh, Elizabeth George. Uh, there are a few other authors that I really enjoy, but those are the main ones. Uh, Hakanessa, for example, is also a great author, even though I didn't like the recent books all that well. And I've read a lot of Henning Mankell, uh, which is uh, similar, very similar. And yeah, I love reading. I love reading and I read a ton. I read a ton of books. Do you have a workout plan? Yes, I do. What is the strange... We already had that. Do you regret not having more time to explore Seoul and Korea? I actually kind of would have the time if I would want to do it. And I want to go to... Um, I will explore Seoul a little bit more. But I'm not going to do this tourist thingy like watching all the palaces and everything. Yes, I said soccer, you're not a European anymore trader. The problem is that if you say football, a lot of people will assume you're talking about American football, so I always say soccer as well, so that you know what you're talking about. Uh, is it fun studying at Iwa? Do you feel you will continue to take Korean classes for as long as you stay in Korea? I will continue to take this class. After that, I will probably have a break for like three months because I am going to Europe for a few weeks, so I would miss a lot of classes already. And that's basically the reason why I think that I will skip one semester. And if I am, I don't know if I'm going to uh, study it again. I will obviously um, uh, try to talk to people and improve it. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, what is Naniwa's chance of winning his G uh, this GSL? No idea. This is just too much. If you ask me about what is his chance of winning the next game, I would actually respond with uh, 70%. But about uh, winning the GSL, I can't tell you. Uh, I'm not in a relationship. I don't have a girlfriend. Uh, it is important to me at some point. I'm a heterosexual. Uh, heter heterosexual. I'm not homosexual and um, relationships are important to me at some point. I have a bit of a problem mm, with falling in love. It's not like um, there are people who fall in love very easily and throw it around like crazy. Yeah, I love you, I love you, I love you. And I am always feel like I have to throw up because I feel this is something that is overused a lot. I usually fall in love like every three to four years, which is really... I admire my sister sometimes because she can she's falling in love quite easily and it's always nice to see how excited she gets about it and uh, how emotional but personally I don't fall in love that often um, but still you can have a lot of fun with a girl and a really good time not only sex um, without being in love yeah, you can just like each other a lot and do a lot of stuff and still have a great time uh, without thinking about getting married in two years. Uh, okay, uh, will it be uh, possible to buy clothes of Korean streams in the future? Well, check out the Prime team. The Prime team, they actually sell clothes. So they uh, um, sell their shirts and everything. So that's actually pretty cool stuff as well. You ever thought about going to North Korea? No, I didn't visit the border yet. I might in the future. Mm. The MSI tournament that recently happened, um, well, I didn't cast it, just, I had, um, I, we had some food and apparently I overdid it a little bit with the spicy sauce or some of the meat was bad, I have no idea, but um, my stomach, I felt really sick and uh, that's the only reason, nothing happy. I think I've read Raymond E. Feist, I was, uh, if I, did he uh, write this Druze book or with this Druze guy? I wasn't a fan. I read it in German though, the translation might have uh, been a little bit bad. Any advice for growing esports in Australia? The Australian pro leagues have grown working at it, but what are your thoughts? Uh, not a question that you can really answer on stream. That's a lot of uh, stuff that you have to uh, uh, know first before you can give like proper advice and also talk about. Mm. What is the go with Moldrap? Does he still work at GOM? No, he doesn't work at GOM anymore. He works for OGN now and is a LOL caster. He actually released a video about it, so you might uh, check out his YouTube channel and uh, yeah, watch the video. What do you think about the German pro game scene, the players in the community? Uh, depends on which community you're talking about. If you meet the people in, per people in person and uh, see people that go to events, it's great. If you uh, read on uh, the websites, I think that a lot of websites in uh, the German community in general are really crap because they um, 
My favorite example is Read More. I really think that there are way too many douchebags on Read More, and the reason is because uh, they generate a lot of traffic, and uh, that the problem is that Read More with Team Liquid, we have this awesome website where there are so many moderators that make sure that the community is not getting out of control, that they don't troll too much, and they do. If you consider how many people write on Team Liquid, these mods do an amazing job. It is amazing. It really amazes me every single time I think about it. And then you have Read More where people don't really have an interest in moderating these forums and banning people because all those morons that are posting there, and I'm not saying that everyone who visits the website is a moron, but all there are way too many idiots posting there and trolling the hell out of the website. And they generate traf uh, traffic and that's something that they want so they um, obviously have to moderate that to, to some degree but really not to the same level that Team Liquid does it for example so they have an interest in people just trolling there and that's what I don't like about the German community that it's so focused on websites like this it's not only this one but the other lot but the German community in general if you met if you meet people on events for example they are amazing. That's kind of different. So uh, if I talk about the German community, then I always kind of differentiate between the people that you actually meet in person, that you meet at an event, or the people that troll the hell out of every community website that we have in Germany, uh, or that are active uh, on uh, on uh, Team Liquid. That's uh, such a huge difference. If you have Germans being active on Team Liquid, where we have uh, a forum that is moderated and a very nice community in comparison to other ones, or if you talk about this. And the players, I uh, think we have a lot of potential in Germany. Let's face it, we did an amazing Germany, and uh, we kind of did an amazing job with Warcraft Three. We did. We were the one country that had the most tournaments, the most leagues, still in StarCraft Two. We are hosting a lot of those weekly cups, and we are doing an amazing job. Right now, obviously, with NA getting involved in well, they are doing a lot, and uh, we might not have the best players in Germany, but we helped a lot establishing an infrastructure that helped esports grow in Europe. That's a fact. And I don't think that anyone who has the knowledge and uh, has the insights about it and uh, was part of the Warcraft 3 community back then and saw how RTS and esports uh, um, developed is going to argue about it. That's something that we achieved. We contributed, uh, contributed a lot to it. You obviously have also other countries like Sweden. They have amazing players. They host DreamHack. So it's not only Germany. That's not what I wanted to say, but I think that's something that you realized already. Do you miss casting Warcraft 3? Sometimes I miss the heroes. Um. <clears throat> Are you able to speak Korean a little bit? No, obviously not. Um, I don't. I'm not fluent. Did, don't you want to punch pain user in the face? Why? Uh, the prices in Korea for food and travel are very, very low. It's very low. You get like a 20 centimeter uh, kimbap, which is kind of a sushi roll, for $2.5. Okay. Da, 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 da. Uh, if you could be a pro gamer instead of what you do, would you? Maybe, but not in the long run. Have you ever casted at the Cyber Sports Arena in Kiev? No, nope, I have never casted uh, in Kiev. Would love to, though, uh, though. Where did you go to college and what did you major in? I studied International Business Administration uh, in Germany, in Ludwigshafen, which is right next to Mannheim at the Fachhochschule. And uh, yeah, have a degree in German. It's called a diploma, which has a different meaning in America and but for the Germans amongst you. So that was because they changed the system. They went to a, to a master and bachelor system uh, the, uh, the, um, the following year, but I still have the uh, original degree, which is kind of on the same level as a master, roughly. Uh, do Australians say mate a lot? Oh, yes, they do. How's it going, mate? Uh, da, 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 da. I'm not counting calories. If you, uh, I'm not that crazy. If you have uh, um, an idea about how your body works and uh, at some point you will get kind of a feel for it of how much you actually need. And uh, yeah, 
I have a diet, but I'm not counting calories or doing anything crazy. Not right now. And, uh, well, guys, if you have any additional questions, we have two minutes left, so uh, post them out, probably on uh, Twitter, as the, the other ones don't work all that well. I think that's probably the last few that we are going to answer. Uh, what car do you have? I don't have a car. Uh, in Korea, you don't need a car. Actually, a car is something that I would not want to have in Korea. Uh, the traffic here is insane. And uh, also in Germany, I didn't have a car because I did not think that I would need one. If you live in a big city, the public transport system in uh, Germany is uh, most of the time it's quite reliable. So uh, having a car is just, there's no reason. It's just, why would you get a car? It's expensive as fuck and uh, you're probably slower than when you take the public, uh, public transport system. So, yeah. Could you do an American accent? I actually don't know. I'm not trying any accents. I don't feel that I'm qualified to do that. What do you hear? The current skill of TLO, will he come back to where he was during the beta? No, he will not because he, he, during the beta it was not that his skill was higher. During the beta it was that with unusual builds you could achieve more. And that's something that he can't rely on anymore. He has still unusual builds, but they are not effective as they were in the beta because now the game has been figured out a lot more and they have, there are openings that are really stable against a lot of what he does and people learned to start scouting. But he's improving a lot and uh, as he's going to to Korea or coming to Korea again, he will also